Hey, welcome to Bridge Church. This is our online service, and we are so glad to have you. This reminds us of last year and the year before when we were doing everything online, but the time is much different. This year, we're with our families on Christmas, and as a church and as a staff, we value our families being able to get that time with one another as you value that as well. So we pray that you all would snuggle up together, watch our service, be engaged, and also be engaged in the chat so we can connect with one another. Now we're gonna have a time of worship. We pray that you worship with us. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone, from Bridge Church to wherever you are. Listen, whatever you're doing today, whether you're with people, whether you're not with people, we want you to know that Emmanuel is always with you. That's what Christmas is all about, the God who came down from heaven to earth to dwell with us, who never leaves us, who never forsakes us. Whatever you're doing, just for a few minutes, would you worship with us? Would you put your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, the reason for the season, Jesus Christ? Would you worship him with us? Come on, let's do this together. Yes, come, say, come, come, let us adore. Worship and adore him. Can you say that with us? It's real simple. Say, come, come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. Kneel down before him. Worship and adore him. Come on, let's do that one more time. Say, come, yes, come, oh, come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. Kneel down before him. Kneel down before him. Worship and adore him. Worship and adore him. Oh, wherever you are, would you come?
morning. Um, today is Christmas, and this is the time of the year when, when my daughter, as I was walking her to school, she said, Dad, I love Christmas. And I said, why? She said, snow and gifts. She had very clear what she's about, right? And this is a time when it, it is a little colder, but it's also kind of a time to connect and, and to be with our families. And hopefully, for many of you, you're with your families right now. I have no idea, uh, because this is recorded, I have no idea if it's gonna snow on Christmas. But I pray it does, and I pray we have an incredible time. But as we were recording here, one of the things that we thought about was, you know, this time last year, a lot of our plans were canceled because of uh, Omicron. And uh, not only Christmas plans, but um, our uh, staff, meeting, our, our staff uh, dinner was canceled. So everything was just chaotic last year. And I think as we look at this year, 
I think a lot of you can admit, even though a lot of the COVID challenges are not the same, I think the effects are still wearing on us. If we're honest, there is just an, a deep fatigue many of the folks I talk to on a daily basis are feeling. Job situations are much different than they were a year ago, but also our financial situations are different. I, most people I talk to, the, their budgets are really tight. And their goals that they made when they refocused, they, they said to themselves, okay, now during COVID, I'm gonna start a business. Now I'm gonna get in shape. Now there's this new focus they'll have. But for every ounce of focus they had, there's now the receipt of fatigue that they're walking around with. Remember all the political strife we faced during COVID? And of course, we're still in a lot of that political strife now. Tensions still arise. Frustration still exists in relationships. And a lot of that comes from the fact that much of the way that our culture moves is we're wanting to find some answer in the government to heal our nation. And in many ways, a lot of the challenges we had during COVID, a lot of the new ideas we had, we wanted to in some way come up with a new inventive way to start a business, a new inventive way to get in shape. And a lot of us were looking for the answer. We look for the answer in government. We look for the answer in our bodies, in businesses. And I think that's why we get so worn out because whatever it is we look to ultimately cannot fully satisfy our hearts. Many of you right now, you're tired. You want to cancel Christmas, at least the, all the plans, because you're, you're worn out. And to, today, this morning, I just want to give you what the scriptures give us during this time, because Christmas is a time where in the Christmas carol, O Holy Night, the line goes, a thrill of hope, then it says, the weary world rejoices. And I just want you to think about that statement of a weary world rejoicing. It's kind of an oxymoron that you would be weary and fatigued and yet still rejoicing. When you think about the time of Christ, he was just in the midst of a, an entire caravan, his mother and father going over to be able to be part of the census, trying to look for a room in an inn. Certainly, at that time, they knew great fatigue. But the scripture I want to look at is in Isaiah 9, and it was a time where the people of Israel were in crisis and in war. And they were trying to find an answer. They were trying to find a king that would be able to establish Israel's reign amidst all the kings that they were dealing with. And Isaiah the prophet would speak of a coming king. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, says it this way. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This prophetic word by Isaiah is how we understand that song, O Holy Night. We get a lot of our imagery from there. But of course, this Prince of Peace, this everlasting Father and this wonderful counselor is the one we know as Jesus. And I just wanna take a second to look at what Isaiah said about Jesus in a time when Isaiah was speaking to a weary culture. And when you think about Jesus coming into a weary moment, he said a child would be born. And this child was the son of God, born in a manger and born not as God coming to earth, but the son of God born on earth. And when he comes, that means he comes in all humility. You cannot get lower than choosing to be born in a trough where animals eat out of as a Jewish oppressed boy under Roman tyranny. 
You can't get lower than that. And so as he's a child, he's a king, but he's a child, Jesus fundamentally understands what it means to have the weight of the world and oppression be over top of you. He understands what it means to be on the absolute bottom of society. He understands what it means to be born in an uncomfortable space. Jesus is born in a toxic, oppressive situation. But it says, prophetically, the government shall be upon his shoulders. And what Isaiah is saying is, while Israel was looking for a prophet, while they were looking for some kind of philosophy in government, while they were looking for some kind of perfect system of legislation, they wanted a person, a king, whose character and wisdom and power could always be right, who could always be someone they looked to, they could always trust. And so as Israel looked to kings, Isaiah said, no, 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 this king will come and the government will not be something he's trying to in some way just legislate and manage. He says the government will be on his shoulders. He will be able to bear the weight of all types of legislation, all types of rules and power. And what he was saying about this Jesus is that he's greater than any king we've ever imagined. He's greater than any legislator we could ever imagine. He can solve the problems that government can't solve because the government would rest on his shoulders. And our Christ, much different than any politician, he was not elected. He was crucified. His name is above all names because he went, the Bible says in Philippians 2, he went to the lowest of regions. And it's because of that that his name is exalted above all else. So Isaiah says there's no need to rest in any kind of governmental heads, to find some kind of temporal legislation, to not put too much pressure on political ideology. But he's saying this government would rest on his shoulders. He says as well he would be mighty God, meaning all the power of God would be in this one king. And as we saw Jesus, we saw the power of God. And the amazing thing is his power was not meant to be put on display just for the sake of showing strength. But when Jesus puts on power, he's feeding people. When Jesus puts on his power, he's healing people. It would be one thing if Jesus just walked on water and, 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 and you know, turned water into wine because that's spectacular. But every time Jesus shows his power, he's helping someone transform, be healed, be saved. This king's power is available. This is this imagery of a mighty God, a powerful God. And as a song would say, God is able. That's the essence of his power. And the interesting thing that he prophesies about this Jesus, this child that will be born, in the midst of a tumultuous time amongst the Israelites, is that he would also be understood as everlasting father. What's crazy is that it's, we sing this in our songs and we read this in the text and we never think about, well, if we're talking about Jesus, how can he also be everlasting father? Now, some scholars would you know, debate, well, maybe they're talking about the Trinity there, but in a, a lot of scholars, and I think this is the imagery that it gives, it's talking about the essence of what a father does, that this father is able to protect and care. In other words, Jesus is also called a shepherd. And as he's a shepherd, he protects the sheep. And in many ways, he's saying this, this child that will be born will give you the presence in the same way a father would, the care the same way a father would. And some of you, this Christmas, are feeling unfathered, alone, and confused. And he's saying this child can have the government rest on his shoulders. This child is a mighty God, and this child can be with you like a father, the father that you didn't feel 
may have been close to you, the father you may have felt disconnection from, this Jesus can protect you as a father would protect, as a shepherd would protect. And then finally, he calls him Prince of Peace. That this king's monarchy would result in peace. That's, that's what Israel was looking for, was peace. They, didn't, they wanted to go into war and know they would win. And if we could be fundamentally honest with ourselves, the peace that Jesus is offering is broader than maybe the peace you're even looking for. Because the peace that Jesus offers is God and people now are at peace because God has enmity with those who would not submit their lives to him. And so that's why Christ sent his son to create peace between God and man. But he also creates peace between husband and wife. He creates peace between child and and, and, and parent. He creates peace on earth amongst people because when Christ is at the center of relationships, he is a reconciler and he creates a ministry of reconciliation. But Jesus not only creates peace with God and peace amongst people, he creates peace with yourself. Because I know many people who have peace when it comes to friends and they might feel peace with God, but when they really sit down and they hear all these thoughts in their head, there's no one there to turn down all the noise. And Jesus, this prince, you see the imagery of a monarchy who can move right into your heart and quiet the noise. Jesus says, my peace I give you. So know this, so know this, Jesus doesn't give us peace, he gives us his peace. No other king can offer their emotional state like this Jesus. And so we, we look to him to calm the noise in our families, to silence the critics in our minds, to end the war we've had with him in our sin. This Jesus, is able to bring ultimate peace. So in Christ, in this imagery that Isaiah gives us, even though we have all of these different challenges we've seen from COVID, as I mentioned before, from the, the things that you've had going on inside of you, from the own challenges that we've faced throughout this entire year, Jesus knows how tired you are. He, he knows. He knows. He knows all the goals you've made, all the focus you wanted. He knows you've wanted to read and pray more. He knows that you've wanted to be better as a leader, as a husband, as a, as, as a, a worker. He, he knows. He's so aware. And Jesus because he's so aware, even more aware <clears throat> than you of your deep fatigue, he is better equipped to give you the peace that you so long for. So this Christmas, as you snuggle up with your family, as you get ready to try to rest a little bit, take a moment and think of that line in O Holy Night. Embrace the fact that we're a weary world, worn out from government challenges, worn out from the goals we tried to make, worn out from this city. It's a weary world. But the contrast is, it's a weary world that rejoices. And we rejoice because this king, we can rest everything on him. He truly is, as the scripture said. The government can rest on his shoulders. He is a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father. Lastly, many of you 
have struggled even with mental health, and I wanna say this to you, continue to seek out therapy, continue to get help, but I also want you to know the last, the, one of the main parts in Isaiah is wonderful counselor. And in Hebrew, the way that that's written, it's actually wonder of, of counsel. And what that means is that this counselor in Jesus, when he counsels, it is a wonder, meaning you are in awe of the counselor themselves. Seek out help, but never forget that this counsel that you receive from him will leave you in awe of his presence and power in your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your kindness and your love. We thank you, Jesus, for the fact that we can come to you in the midst of all the challenges we face this year. And we pray, God, that we would experience this great counselor, that we would be in awe. We would have the wonder of your counsel. Be that prince. May we rest all of our lives in you. Amen. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Lord Savior's birth. sin and mirrors pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill of hope the weary soul rejoices for yonder
Thank you guys so much for worshiping with us. Again, next week, we will be online again. So we pray that you would look out for that. And then on January 8th, we are gonna have the opportunity to come back together. So we look forward to seeing you then. God bless you. Have a great Christmas. And we pray to see you again.